This is the Art of Fashion TV, where art, fashion, and music all meet in one place, right here on the Art of Fashion TV. And now, welcome your host, Glenn Donovan. All right, thank you, and welcome to the Art of Fashion TV. I'm Glenn Donovan, your host. Tonight we have a great, great show coming up. I have uh, with me Trish Cook. Uh, she is an actress and producer out of L.A. Thank you for joining me, Trish. How's it going today? Good. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so pleased to be here. Thank you. Ex excellent, excellent. So, Trish, you're, you're working on uh, a lot of different projects here. Uh, tell, tell me a little bit about uh, this one called American Roots. You're working on that right now? Um, I'm very excited about American Roots. You know, there aren't a lot of stars that are one name people, Elvis and you know, those kind of people. So Winona is that. And she's a wonderful uh, person, talent, Grammy winner. She's also an actress. But anyway, we're doing kind of a travel log kind of a show with her husband, that's the drummer, Cactus Mosier. And we're traveling all over the South to kind of behind the scenes look at the food and the music and the atmosphere and the culture. And it's all Americana fun with a great singing star. Excellent, excellent. So you're, you're traveling, uh, kind of like uh, following uh, Winona and her husband around uh, some of the southern states there. Uh, I have a son who's in Nashville right now. Is that one of the stops that you made along the way? Yes, they, they were in Nashville. We have a schedule for, for 10 shows. It's kind of a reality show to show real people what they do and how the stars travel around with their bands and everything. So interestingly enough, her very first show was at Graceland in the Jungle Room, which is a really big deal. And so we did the first show there on tape. And the second one we did um, at Sun Records, at where Elvis made his first recording, yes. as everybody knows. And the third one, Willie Nelson's Ranch. So these are her friends in the country music business. Awesome, awesome. That, that, that sounds great. So, so starting over in Graceland, uh, traveling throughout the South, that, that, that sounds good. And you were also sampling some of the food along the way. I know when I, you know, take a ride, I just took a road trip to uh, Virginia this past week. It was uh, wonderful. Uh, but, you know, when you're on the road, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of fast food places, not so many great restaurants. Was it a challenge finding like some of the, uh, you know, some of those, uh, you know, good places to eat while you're on the road? I think it's always a challenge. <laughs> But, but part of the show is to share the food. Um, some of, They love it. I don't always like all the fried stuff as much as they do, but that's part of the show to show the kind of places where a person goes to eat. And she kind of, you know, there were friends with the owners of these establishments. It's not the regular fast food chain. These are kind of local establishments. And she talks to them and they play music in the establishment. Sometimes she's flipping the hamburger and it's just kind of real life what people do that are even though they're stars they're real people and they're out there sharing personalities and challenges and all these things that come up along the way oh that, that that's excellent so so when Very when fun. when when you roll into a town and you go into one of these local restaurants are they excited to see you know a big celebrity come through the door they are they're really excited because when known is huge she has a huge following in concerts and all of that and um you know, she grew up in the South, and so she's very familiar with this. And it's kind of like rhythm and blues. It's who she is. And it's yeah. such a, a piece of Americana. But it's the focus is on the South because that's where the country music started, as you know. Absolutely. And there's a lot of music going on. You know, my, my son's saying that all the music's kind of funneling through uh, Nashville, you know, everything, you know, all styles, not just country. All right, great. So where, where can we, uh, is this coming out where we can see it anywhere or is it, has it been released yet or is it still kind of in the making? In the making, it hasn't been released yet. We're going to shoot a whole uh, 10 shows before it's on the air. So we're working on that. So we're at about show five or six right now. So it's in process, but it's going to be a great show for everybody. Excellent, excellent. Well, we're going to keep our eyes open. And uh, one more name of the, the name of, of the, the show, one more time again. American Roots, and it's spelled R-O-U-T-E-S because they're on the roads, the roots to the south. Okay, American Roots. I want to take a look at this. We have the trailer right here for it. Why don't we take a look? American Roots coming right now. Is a 
microcosm of the strange. Yeah. <laughs> that is a good way of putting it. <laughs> been a part of my life. Bluegrass and blues are it for me. And I feel it in here so deeply that I need to be around it. You need to hear them out. Crash a wedding last right. night. So. Well, welcome to the dance. That's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yeah. yeah. Another um, project that you're working on over here. Uh, it looks like you're you teamed up with um, the Duck Dynasty people uh, for for um, a project called The Blind. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about The Blind? Well, the Blind. I was cast. I have a lot of agents as an actor, and I have an uh, an agent in New Orleans and. Believe it or not, I just auditioned like everybody else. My agent, of course, set it up and they cast me for the show. And it's all, it's funny how all the pieces fit together because I'm an actress when that's needed and a producer when that's needed. So I'm not part of the production team of The Blind. Um, this was the Duck Dynasty family. And mm -hmm. it's really kind of a rags to riches, very much of poverty, the really extreme poverty to, mm -hmm. They're a well-known name now. And so we shot it in Shreveport. Mm -hmm. uh, my character was the matriarch of the family that brought the Christianity to them that changed their life. So I was really happy to be cast in that role um, because it was very significant in his life. Excellent, excellent. So is this kind of like a, a, a scripted um, adaptation from that, that story, the Duck Dynasty story, and it's kind of like you know, telling that story of the of the family, you know, getting, uh, you know, like you said, rags to, rag to riches, but of the, the Duck Dynasty story, is that what it's about? No, um, it's really about Phil's life, the head of the Duck Dynasty family. It's about his life from the time he was born. So that's why they did it in Shreveport, because he was born there. And his family had, were very, very, very poor. And his mother, I hate to say it, but she was in an insane asylum and his father was kind of out doing God only knows what and he, and Phil was then responsible for his siblings so where does a kid go for food with you don't have any money or anything makes me want to cry I tell you um so he was in the woods he was in the woods trying to shoot a squirrel or that's where his keen sense of listening came from because he was trying to shoot a duck or whatever he could find to to feed his siblings to keep them alive so this is how poor these poor kids were they had kind of like burlap sacks for clothes. This is nothing about the reality show and everything that happened with that. It's it's his journey as a child up through, he marries his high school sweetheart. And of course, there were a lot of, like a lot of challenges for people that age. And I think they're tempted by alcohol and, you know, everything what, what a lot of people go through. Um, sure. They had a lot of difficult things in their childhood. And so there's a turning point. This is a true story on his life. It is scripted. It's a real, no kidding, feature film that's going to be released in September. But it tells uh, Phil's life because most people only know him as an older gentleman. In reality, he had the life that really needs to be explained because it inspires others. And also it brings the Christianity, which is a very important part of his life and how he found success at the end of his life and not in the beginning because he was a lost soul, so to speak. You know what I mean? What I mean? Wow, wow, that, that, that's really amazing. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Uh, can you explain a little bit about the, uh, that, that you're, uh, the role that you're playing in the movie? I played his sweetheart's mother and um, because she, she liked Phil, but he was kind of a wild, person a wild you know he, he kind of raised himself in the woods you know what I mean and so her point was to show him and share with him that there's a better way in life and you have to be humble and pray and I have faith and find out what Christianity is about helping each other because that's what people were trying to do for him and he had to go through like all of us do I guess certain turning points in one's life and when he kind of grasped the the uh, believe in God it changed everything for him. 
Wow, wow. I have uh, some friends that have similar stories as well. Uh, you know, I, I can, uh, you know, share with them with, with you at another time. So that's great. So, so the name again of that project is called The Blind. And you Blind. said that, that that's coming out uh, in, is, uh, on theaters or where are we going to see that uh, this September, you said? In September, it'll be in theaters. And, you know, when I first got the script, I thought to myself, The Blind, you know, what kind of title is that? But after you know the story, you see why it's the blind. He was kind of like a blind person trying to find food in his way and what to do and how to do it. So the title was really very good, actually, in my opinion. So it'll be out in September. September 23rd, I think, is the release date in theaters. All right, coming right up, we do have a quick clip of The Blind, and this is starring Phil Robertson of Duck Dynasty, The Blind, right here. Ah, Phil Robertson. Ah, Kay Carraway. Promise to love. And be with you forever. forever. You can do just about anything you set your mind to, Phil Robertson. <laughs> but it's the drink. He becomes the devil, son. We're fine. I don't think we are. Babe. Get out. make this work I want it to work. I don't know what to say, Master Sweet. You got to die, and then you need to be born again. Uh, so we're going to keep our eye out for the blind. Uh, so, so you, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, a, a couple things about, you know, him finding his faith. And uh, you, you, I, I believe that you're involved with uh, some of those uh, more faith-based kind of um, projects. Uh, you care to, you know, maybe uh, explain a little bit about some of those other things that you're involved with? I have about 16 projects altogether. Um, so one of the ones that's really, really important to me is called God and I. And this project is a, is a documentary. And it's basically true film, true accounts of things that have happened to people that were kind of unexplicable in any other way. So we're filming these people from all over the world and our director is going to combine with music and, and video and audio for people to, to kind of experience what others have experienced through their stories. I mean, I, I actually, never planned on having it in the film, but my house caught on fire. So I actually experienced something similar to that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't put the fire out. The fire department didn't put the fire out. It was a big dramatic event in my life, but um, there was no other way to explain it than uh, it wasn't me. And it wasn't the fire department that put it out and saved my life. So it's really very important to me, this project got in mind. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, so um, God and I are similar stories about that, 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 you know, unexplainable kind of miracles that are, uh, you know, um, kind of happening to everyday people in different uh, stories and circumstances. Is that kind of what that's, that's about? That's exactly right. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Different people are being interviewed and taped in their settings, wherever they live. So this is going to be people from all over the world that have had all kinds of things happening to them. So we are planning not only God and I, it's in process right now, but God and I want one, two, three, because how many stories do we want to know about? A lot of things happen in the world that no one has any idea. So we've taken this challenge upon ourselves to uplift and share and give people real reason to believe that sometimes life isn't what just people think it is. It's actually much bigger than that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree with that. And when, you know, when you were explaining it, the different stories um, that, that people are having, uh, I was thinking the same thing. This could not just be, you know, one, one episode. It could be kind of like a series. Um, I was watching a, a series kind of about like uh, near-death experiences, and they had, you know, dozens and dozens of accounts of different people and some of the um, spiritual journeys they went through at a, you know, during a near-death experience and some of those experiences. And it's just, uh, you know, keeps on going on and on and they had lots and lots of people so I'm sure this is kind of a, a similar situation where 
you know, you have plenty of people with their stories. You know, um, I would say that some people might be reluctant to share their stories, but I'm sure there's enough people that are willing to come out and share that you can have, a, you know, enough material for definitely a whole series. Did you find that, you know, people are reluctant to kind of share uh, some of their, you know, more uh, personal stories with you? I did find that um, some people want to share another's, you know, they volunteer. Do they want to tell their story? But I have to tell you, as one of the producers of this project, I was filming myself, you know, because we're kind of on both sides of the camera in life. So when I'm filming this story, it's it's pretty hard to hold the camera still when this person explains what happened to her, that she died, she was in a coma, and what happened to her while she was in the coma, she was supposed to die, and um, what she saw, what she experienced, and that place between life and death and what happened to her and how it happened. There's been a book written about her life, Extraordinary Woman, and she survived. I, I met her in person. She's about you know, 80, 85 pounds. Uh, she's very thin from all the, everything that happened to her when she passed out. And now she's in charge of, uh, Los Angeles is one of the biggest places for organ transplants. And so she has devoted her life to that when her husband, her family, everybody abandoned her. And it was a very difficult story to film, but I think it's really an important one because sometimes the people that you think are gonna stand by you, they don't. Okay, Trish, I do believe we'd have a, uh, a little uh, trailer of God and I right here. So why don't we take a look at it, God and I. Trish, um, you know, I would love to talk to you some more. Unfortunately, we are kind of running out of a little bit of time. Um, so I'm going to, you know, we're going to wrap it up for now. But um, I, I want to thank you again. I really do wish we had a little bit more time to uh, talk about, especially that last subject, because I definitely find it very interesting. And I could probably talk to you for uh, an hour or two on that alone. Uh, but again, I want to thank Trish, Co uh, Trish Cook for coming out. And I want everybody to look for some of her projects like American Roots, the Blind and God and I. They're all coming out and we'll keep an eye out there for you. Trish, thanks a lot for coming out today. So much for having me. I really appreciate it. Okay. Love well, everybody. Talk soon. Thank you. Okay. Thank all you right. guys. Hello and thank you for joining us on the Art of Fashion TV. This is Glenn Donovan. I'm sitting here with fashion designer Veronica Adamo. And thank you for joining us. How's it going thank today? You. Good. Good, good. So you're, you're in New York, you live here in New York, and you're a fashion designer? Yes. Okay, and you're um, originally from Indonesia, is that correct? Yes, I am. Okay, tell me, how, how long have you been over here in New York for? I've been 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, permanent uh, residence in New York, and before that I just back and forth from Indonesia and New York, doing my business. Excellent, excellent. So, um, what uh, being from Indonesia, there's a lot of fashion and a lot of production happening in the fashion industry over in that country already. Is there something that, like uh, you know, coming over to from from there uh, to to New York? Is there like some differences in how like business is uh, you know kind of conducted over there or? Uh, some is similar to Indonesia, what I've been uh, doing, but I added a new collection uh, in New York that is. Uh, Modest fashion, mm -hmm. which is now in, in trend. Uh, usually, uh, people wearing some or uh, revealing, while modest fashion is more uh, close, like long hem mm -hmm. and uh, under the knee lengths, something like that. So, so one's more like kind of like for parties, and one's kind of more like a for like a formal uh, event. Yeah, formal. Uh -huh. Yes. 
All right. And you were mentioning before that you do some uh, handmade uh, artwork on some of the, the, the dresses. Yeah. Can you go uh, explain a little bit about what you um, do with that? I made a uh, hand painted on silks and uh, I cut it into dress, wedding dress or kebaya or evening gown. Excellent. Excellent. So um, you, you, you were mentioning that you're concentrating on some of the wedding outfits for your upcoming collection. Yes. Okay. Because I see like there is still a good market especially in New York, mm -hmm. with custom-made for wedding gown. Nice. A a and some of the designs that you, that you put on there, those are hand-painted by, by yourself? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I have some assistants, but they are just doing helping things, but the main painting is I did it myself. Now, uh, the styles that you put on these dresses, is that something that is uh, traditionally back from Indonesia that uh, you no. use? No. I do it uh, like more than uh, just uh, like uh, according to the New York market, mm -hmm. not to traditional because no bu no buyer here, mm. no customer here. Well, maybe mm. uh, maybe you can put a little bit of the influence into yes, that a little a, bit. a little bit touch. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So you can kind of like a little bit of homage to your yes. to your own own yeah. uh, you know your own traditions there. Yeah. Uh, about how long does one uh, a wedding take uh, uh, a dress take to complete? Uh, from one month, but it depends on the intricate model mm -hmm. and what is uh, applique over there, like crystal or embroidery, hand embroidery, mm -hmm. or even hand painted. And this so, is all done by hand. Do you yes. make the entire dress by hand or just no, the... No, I, ha I have assistant, mm -hmm. but I cut the material and I choose uh, crystal or uh, a design for the embroidery. Nice, nice. Okay, is that something when you're when when you have somebody who comes to you and says, "Make my wedding dress," do you talk to them about some of the different styles and some of the different designs that you want to incorporate into the dress, or do the, yeah. do they usually just say, "Oh, I just want you to do it"? Uh, I consult. Mm -hmm. uh, they have ideas, and then I think uh, the ideas into the design, and they maybe want to add something, and I suggest to something. You know, so agree. We agree on something. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I, I forget how much, how long does it take for one one dress to be made from start to for complete? For handmade, uh, minimum two months ahead. You have to order. <laughs> yeah, two months ahead. Yeah, because it's fitting. At least we do four time fitting. You okay. know, because it's like really fitted. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. And can we see some of those um, examples on your website? The wedding, yes. Okay. It's uh, upcoming. Okay, yes. and, and you've been doing um, a, a lot of uh, different fashion shows in the area, in, in, in New York? In, in, in New York, I'm... so maybe I already have a fashion show like maybe nine times mm -hmm. during the last uh, two years mm -hmm. uh, with other, if an organizer or I'm doing solo. Right, okay, okay. And you mentioned uh, earlier when we were talking uh, before uh, that you did one that was in the, in the street uh, during COVID. So there was a lot of difficulty yes. getting places indoors. So you decided yeah. to take it to the streets. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, it was interesting because uh, everything is closed and all street, the busiest street in New York was empty and it was pandemic and everybody's like sad. So why not we just make cheer up a little bit so I get their uh, available model it's only four model available at the time right. and I contact only one videographer and one photographer they are available and they support my idea to make like New York like so do the world that New York New Yorker is resilient. Yes, we're resilient yeah. and strong, and we're going to bounce yeah. back no matter yes. what you throw at us. That's kind of how how the yes. New Yorkers are for sure. Excellent, excellent. So you can see in my video about that uh, fashion show at the time. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. All right, so um, you you brought some models with us uh, today. Yes. And uh, you have um, a, a collection that we're about to c come out and see. And uh, you, you mentioned that this is going to be split into two different halves. You have your more formal side of the collection and also more of the party side, which has yes. a little more glitz and glam. All right, yes. are we ready to bring some of the models out for you? Yes. Okay, Thank excellent. You. All right, we're going to start here. Excellent. All right. So our first model, what's our, her name? Uh, Ramilia, please come. Okay, Ramilia. So, All right, and tell me a little bit about the dress over yes. here. She's wearing a velvet meat of, uh, evening gown with crisscross mm -hmm. on the back. Yes, and with a mermaid tail on the back. Thank you, Ramilia, it's beautiful. Yep, and another beautiful, beautiful model, this is mm -hmm. Linnea. Wearing the same uh, velvet, mm -hmm. maxi dress with side slit, backless, 
with pleated accent in the front. Thank you, Tanya. Yes. This is Henry Cho. Very pretty with a mermaid gown with deep v necks in front and backless. Thank you, Henry. This is more a cocktail party mm -hmm. where wore by Michelle Wood. Same steel material. Velvet sunburn with pleated in front and backless with bow in the back. Thank you, Michelle. It's awesome. And now it's interesting. This is for party collection. Okay, the party collection Person. now. Yeah, it's Janet wearing the all glitter gown. Hmm. For clubbing with V neck and with the strap on the back. Hmm. It kind of has a Art Deco, almost yes. like a Roaring Twenties yes. kind of feel. The material. Yes, it is. I like that. Thank you, Janet. And the next is especially this, this one too. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. very plump V mm -hmm. with a very slim cut with strap and, and backless. Wearing perfectly by Daido. Thank you, honey. And another model is wearing a midi dress. Interesting, very interesting with double strap on the back. Wearing, wore perfectly by Carmina. She is a ballerina, so you can see the gesture that's very flexible, the way she's wear the dress. Thank you. Okay, let's bring these models out one more time for a final look. Come on out, one more time. Let's take one more look out here. Excellent. All right, there we have it. Thank you, Veronica Adamo. And thank you, Patricia Cook, for joining us on the Art of Fashion TV. We're going to see you next time. Thanks for joining us. All right, next time.